Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this morning. Got a great show lined up. As always, we're going to start our weather by Haney Technical Center, corner of Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Interesting enough, now I've, I've seen temperatures is not going to get, I've got a couple different reports. Some of them say it's not getting out of the 80s, some say it's going to be low 90s. So I'm going to just say it's going to be a high of 90 today and a low of 78. What's interesting though, and to me though, is the water temperature jumped up one more degree to 85. Now we're about, I was thinking about this last night, we're getting close to the peak of our uh, summer water temperature. It's not going to get much warmer than 85, maybe 86. and. Uh, we're at that point now. So, you know, we're here in late July, August is uh, coming in on Friday. We're gonna have some more hot temperature in August and it's gonna start cooling down. I showed a chart pretty soon. It's really interesting where it starts sort of cooling down. Uh, our river readings brought to, uh, right over here on the corner, the Apalachicola River near Bluntstown. It is reading a 5.5 and it's falling out for the weekend. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday falling out. Saturday morning, looking at around four foot Saturday morning. A lot of y'all are doing good at on the river. Uh, got some good pictures on, on some good fishing there. Choctahatchee Carabill, taking a look at the Choctahatchee Carabill, reading a 4.8, and it is going to uh, stay pretty close to that for the weekend. Friday uh, night, it may start dropping just a little bit. I know we've got some bad thunderstorms came through the other night, so I don't know if that's going to affect it or not, because some of that was in South Alabama. Uh, the tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Their motto is when carrying counts, and we're looking at, our, at the tide today is July the 30th. We're getting close to some neat tides. We'll have a high tide at 12.03 and a low tide at 7.45, and not a, lot of, uh, not a lot of movement today or tomorrow. Marine forecast, I, I like it when they say it's going to be uh, light and variable. So what that means, because uh, you know, don't, we don't get that a whole lot. Usually it's 5 to 10 south, southeast or something like that in the summertime. So. Well, that means, you know, there's not going to be much of a, a breeze going on, so it's not going to be steady. You know, these afternoon breezes have been really kicking up. Uh, it was white cap the other afternoon uh, on North Bay, so I, I, when it does that in the summertime, it really kicks up fast, too. So I'll be aware of that, especially got the kids out in boats and all, make sure they know how to, you know, you know tack against the wind and get back home and all, okay? Uh, I just called, just got off the phone to get a report from Panama City Beach Pier, talk to Carrie. Uh, jotted down some notes. He just, he, I didn't realize they've caught two big fish this summer. They've caught a 13 foot tiger shark off the Panama City Beach Pier. And I also caught a seven foot sailfish. I've got a picture of that sailfish. And uh, that, but a 13 foot tiger shark to bring it in, they caught it, uh, took a picture and released it. But that, that's a big shark right out of Panama City Beach Pier. So I wouldn't be swimming a lot out there where people are fishing, uh, especially. Uh, uh, late in the afternoon or at night. Okay, also they caught uh, a lot of kings are being caught. They're not real big. They're small. A lot of ladyfish being caught. A uh, few Spanish. It's been a really uh, bad year on Spanish mackerel as far as the pure fishermen have been concerned. Uh, no pompano, no flounder, and no whiting recently. So that that's uh, pretty slow out there really right now, but it's interesting. They caught a big old shark. Also caught that sailfish. All right, now that's a report from Panama City Beach Pier. All right, we're going to take our break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Now, listen, we're going to get started on some pictures, odd things and all, uh, just various different ones, not just pictures, but I want to show you this chart. I just mentioned it during the weather, the water temperature chart, and I don't have the, I don't have the, uh, it didn't come in at the bottom, but anyway, we're right there at the peak of water temperature. This is a whole year-long water temperature. We're right in the summer right there. And it's going to, uh, we're going to start cooling off pretty soon in, uh, in August. We're going to start cooling off, believe it or not, late, late August, okay? So and we'll talk more about that later. All right, moving on down the line, we'll, let's talk about the scallop size. We've got those uh, set up right here. The early, the early scallops, you know, on the bottom of the screen right here, that's what the early scallops look like. That's a July 4th scallop. Uh, in the middle is a, a late August, and then that big one up top is a September uh, scallop. That's just the way it is, folks, okay? Here's the same size as here. We're just rolling through. We did this, uh, see that, that quarter right there? If you just wait, if we can just wait, look at that meat really on the far left is twice the size of the meat on the far right. These are the pictures I took, uh, and, and this is uh, true to life in St. Joe Bay, okay? 
The next picture of Stan Kirkland actually sent this. This is saltwater fish, and uh, he was asking for people to ID it. And I, when I first saw it, I said, well, that's a little brim or something. But uh, Stan Kirkland sent that, and he, it really uh, it's, a, it's a damsel fish, okay? That's what we found out. Ryan Huggins, uh, a couple of nice grouper here. Good job, Ryan Huggins. Uh, let's see. Don't forget now, this weekend, got a big sea quarters, 11th annual Kingfish shootout. Uh, go to the tournament and watch a weigh-in or whatever, but uh, keep in touch with all kind of neat things going on. Okay, now I'm going to, okay. Uh, now my next picture is I'm going to have to come back to me for a minute. And uh, I want to show you a picture. I had an opportunity uh, recently to go over to my hometown in, in, uh, in Quincy and visit my, my old high school football coach who's still living. This is my coach, Carlos Deason, my high school football coach, nine years old. Had a, got up there, went up to his house, and uh, just had. A, he still lives in the same house, been in fifty some years, and uh, had a wonderful, wonderful visit. And I encourage you to, if you got any old teachers or coaches left, give them a call or run by and see them or something. And I had it. But you can see someone posted he must have been a pretty good hunter. I said he was a great coach and a great hunter, but he loved to. And he was a dog hunter. Okay, he came from Liberty County, and uh, we had several. I played on the last football team that uh, was ten and zero. Uh, well, he had he had several ten and zero teams, and. Uh, Wonderful, good, good man, and uh, meant a lot to me. I just want to go up there. You get an urge every now and then to just go see somebody. I had an urge this summer to go see my high school coach. Okay, now let's see if we pick up where we. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have a couple of. Hopefully, uh, you'll think these are funny. I thought the word when I saw them. So, uh, Jeff likes these too. If you can think of a better fish pun, let me know. What do you think about it, Jeff? <laughs> if you think of a better fish pun, let let me know. Okay. If you don't think that's funny, check out this one. This is a little bit true now right here. My phone died, so I spent some time with the family today. They seem like nice people. <laughs> uh, okay. My buddy Jim Balch, who was an excellent bass fisherman. Uh, good job there, Jim. Nice bass right there. So, uh, this is little Brianna Pitts just graduated this year. Now, she she caught this fish before she went to work the other day. She was a waitress and all, and uh, I thought that's good, a girl will get up and get up, go fishing and catch a big old fish like that before work. Tom Gurley's picture at the state park, that's duckweed, and that's a good good picture there, Tom. He always takes great pictures from the state park. Okay, my buddy David Lee. David catching a big fish. Actually, that's a catfish. Wouldn't get a good job of getting that big old fish in there. Good job, David Lee, catching your cousin Andy Cobb sent that to me. All right. Now listen, I, I, look, this is a good idea here, okay? Check it out. It's fun to start with, but if, you, if you're if on a boat, have some ladies and all, don't have any bathroom facilities, look how you set that up. Now that's not a, that's not a bad idea. Or if, you, if you're in the woods camping and doing some primitive camping where you don't have any facilities to go out like in a, in a toilet or anything, it's a great idea. Right? Isn't that a good idea, Joe? I'd like that, okay? I, we could have used that in the years past. Uh, all right, next picture, Tim Kahneman. A nice, nice uh, trout there, Tim. Good job. Okay. Let's see. Marriage is like a deck of cards. In the beginning, all you need is two hearts and a diamond. By the end, you wish you had a club and a spade. <laughs> all right, Gail, I know you like that. Okay, Lionfish Tournament. Uh, we talked about Carol Cox. They brought in the most 129. Tommy Hallman had the, the biggest and, and the smallest there. Good job there. Okay, and I was just that was just me covering it. Let's see. You know, let me see if I got enough. I'm gonna go back to uh, uh, one more picture. Okay, a couple more pictures. Okay, here here's uh there are a few scholars being called. They're not not a lot of them. Here's Maria Patronus. Uh, she she and her group got that. That's a nice mess right there, Maria. Good job. She was in my class a couple years ago. And Mandy Miller Warren with her little daughter Reese. Nice fish there, Reese. And oh, uh, this is a special picture yesterday. I took Mason, he and I went up to Deer Point Lake. I got a new Tahatsu motor, and we're just breaking it in. Had a good time riding around. So we took a selfie. We took a bunch of them. So, okay, good job there. So that, that takes care of our pictures. And I uh, also want to uh, mention, uh, if you have any pictures, send them in and email them to me. Or, or just, uh, you, I still live now and then get some in the mail. So we share, put everybody on, on TV. And I tell you what's going on. All right, now, Tommy Martin, I know you watch the show. I've tried to uh, email you a couple of times and can't get a hold of you. So if you're watching the show, please call me. I'm going to uh, give you some information on something. Also, uh, well, let's go and take a break now and come back. All right, we'll be right back. Uh, 
You know, you get around my age, you, you flash back and remember things growing up and all, especially uh, all some of the good things you had in the outdoors and all. I can still remember way back in the day, I was a little boy and, and we fished, my dad took my brother and I, we'd always fish down in Liberty County, down below Teloji on the Oaklawton River out of Whitehead's Fish Camp. It was way back there, but it was dad, dad's favorite place to go. So uh, we'd get on Oaklawton and we'd go up the river and all, we'd fish and dad, you know, so, but one day, uh, we'd finished fishing and coming in about about midday and all, and my dad asked me if I wanted to run the motor. And I just, it, boy, I'm be, I, I can still remember the feeling of getting in the back of that boat. And he easy, and he, he sat up there by me and out in front of me. He said, "Go real easy." It was a six horsepower motor, man. I thought I had a 747 jet. I was so happy, and I, I, I just, sw I was swollen with pride, and that my dad had enough confidence in me to drive that motor and all. And and I never will forget that. And I was a little boy. Well, yesterday, and I want you to look at this picture here. This is my grandson, Mason, and this is my dad's old boat, and this is the first time Mason ever got to drive a, a little motor like this. Now, this is a 20-horsepower Tahatsu. We're up at Deer Point Lake, but, man, I, I had a reminiscent of flashback, wonderful feeling yesterday. My dad, is, my dad who would be Mason's great-granddad, smiling down on us, uh, and I know he was, he was tickled to see that. I had the boat refiberglassed, and... Uh, and it just uh, it was just a special day yesterday to do that. So I just, uh, and you know, when you break in those motors and all that, there's a 20 horse Tohatsu, like I said, you got to run about two hours, about half speed. So I've been doing that just a little bit, run up Deer Point Lake, just sometimes just go around a big circle. We, we're looking for gators too. That's the big thing, you're looking for gators, not, not breaking in the motor. All right, now let's, uh, let's set up this. Uh, we went uh, the other afternoon, went fishing with my two good buddies, Mark Cowher and, and Bill Allen, and we had a, uh, we didn't have an uh, outstanding day, so we do have this video. And I talked to, when I was putting the boat in yesterday, I ran an officer, Travis Basford, one of my former students and all. And we were just, you know, in general, always ask these guys, I know a lot of them, you know, what's, what's been, who's been catching what and all. And Travis said, Coach, it's been slow the last couple of weeks. I mean, East Bay and West Bay, and I, he, he hits that area pretty strong. He said, I've talked to some really good fishermen, and they're just not catching a lot of fish right now. So it's been slow. So let's, uh, Jeff, let's go and roll this video. Let's take a look at this. Backing up. We're down here at a pretty bayou, what I call a pretty bayou boat ramp. They call it the shoreline circle boat ramp. Everybody knows. <laughs> what do you call it, Bill? Pretty bayou. <laughs> okay, pretty bayou. My whole life it has been, so. <laughs> well, anyway, it, it is a pretty place to launch. Think about Dr. Amy Lee when he put it by you with Amy Lee Botanical Meadow. He caught a lot of trout out of here back in the 1920s and 30s. Yeah, it's That's what I said. All I said, right. You kidding me? Getting a ready rain to go. Jacket? Mark and Bill, how's it going? Good. Hey, How are you, Coach? How are you today? It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. We're doing good. I got up at daybreak this morning, y'all. It was flat calm all morning to about 12:30. Well, that's because we weren't going at daybreak. <laughs> right. <laughs> if we'd have gone this morning, it'd be windy and calm now. Exactly. But the wind picked up a little bit. But it's going to be a. Now, you've We've been catching that tomorrow. We have been. It's been really good this week. Uh, Michael and I fished the tournament two weeks ago and didn't do very well. But the weather was terrible, but all the rest of the time it's been really good. Good top water, good spoon fishing. Good deal. Bill, you've been working. I hadn't fished since Greg and I fished that tournament three weeks ago. This okay. is ridiculous. All right, well, I've been busy too, so we're going to work catch up starting to get time. in the way. <laughs> all right. Oh, look at here. We, we've been up in a hole up in there. Didn't do, didn't do too good, the boys. We're well, plan B. Yeah, we're going to make a little run back around the other side and see if we can catch these fish in, on the sandbar with that tide moving over it. Yeah. Now, this is normal, this is normal fishing. A lot of times you, you don't work out just as planned at the beginning. Well, things need to settle down a little bit. We had that little storm move through that may have unsettled things for a little bit, but uh, it wouldn't hurt for the wind to lay down a little bit. All right, now we see some birds up here working the water. You probably can't see them on the screen, but they up here. We're going to the ease up in here. I think the water break. All right, Bill's got them hooked in the water. What do you think, Mark? I don't know. 
don't know. I tell you what, he got that rod bent. Yeah, he's getting a little bit bigger. It could only be a redfish on that rod, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not the other rod. Uh -huh. Is that top water? Which, yeah, no. You're no, fishing. that's some Paul Brown. He's getting a little bigger. You getting bigger? That's a catfish. Well, what's the odds? You want the net? I don't know. I ain't seen him yet. Tell me if I need to raise the pole. You seen anything with him? Not yet. He's running around the circle. Well, he's getting the pole. You're going to raise the pole. Yep. What did I tell you? Okay. What did I tell you? He acted like that. Now, I ain't putting that in my net. Every time I use one of these suspended baits, yeah. that's what I wind up with. I am not putting that in my net. I'm a good mind just to cut it off and let him have it. I ain't putting that in my net. Listen, that's good eating. Yeah, I've heard that. I don't want to find out. <clears throat> But I have heard that. I don't know why you and Donna don't get in the catfish restaurant business. We ought to. <laughs> because nobody wants sale. Uh. Oh, really? That's a soft bait in it. Yeah. Paul Brown. Is that Ooh, Paul Brown? There you go. I don't like Paul Brown. All right, I'm going to put the catfish do. Okay, we're okay. I, I don't know what that is. Bill made a real long cast. And, uh, I think he knows he's not here. What are you fishing with, Bill? Well, that's that, uh, that's that same skitter wall. Okay. I don't know what we got here. Either that or he had real eyes. Where is it? It's already up? Where'd it go? Where is it? You pulled against uh, that drag so quick. Oh, man. That's a big fish. The agony. I pulled him off this power pole, and then he turned, and he and he popped it straight out. He, he broke it? Yeah. That's a big fish. How big was it? I never saw it. I, I saw it. was a redfish. I saw it right here as it went. You saw it, Mark? Oh, it's definitely redfish. That was a good fish. He was a good fish. solid 26, 27, maybe 28 inch at least. That's fish. I had a look. He just made that. He never knew he was hooked. Yeah. He didn't put up any kind of a real struggle until he got right here and he got on that pole. Man, I, hooked him on the pole right there? What yeah. happens is, is that they'll run at the boat like that and then typically, you know, we'll jerk the pole up but we didn't get a chance to do it. Well, he didn't really know, you know. He just was swimming. You just don't know. That's why yeah, you just well, don't know. Fish. He made the big, you know, he made that big turn. Yep. Yeah. All right. Y'all know I'm coming in. Trout. The hem I can't shake off. <laughs> Got a mouthful of badonkadon. You lost a big one and then hooked a little one. Oh, yeah. How it always goes. Isn't it? <laughs> All right, I've got another one over here. Mark's got one on. I think it's a little trout. A little trout? Pretty trout. He is. Color's gorgeous, isn't it? That is gorgeous. That don't like look like bass anymore. No, you're right. That was like your Woo, buddy. That was like your plug, Mark. I almost did what you did. I almost got hooked. <laughs> Y'all need uh, that little trout in there? Well, I'm having trouble with it. I'm glad I got the camera rolling. I'm telling you, Winston. <laughs> you need he help? does not yeah. want to be set free. He has made a mess. Little trout. All right. that... You tried to catch me, I think. <laughs> I'm using a, a lure that Michael has started using last year. It's a Strike King Sexy Shad uh, freshwater bait that we take off the hooks and put on stainless hooks. It's just real shiny, very rattly. Just messing around with it today. All right. He liked it. He did like it. I was getting late, folks. Or... Bill, what are you fishing with? I switched and put one of those mullet colored badonkadonks on there. Uh -huh. A couple of little trout, but this wind had just laid down a little bit, it'd make it a lot easier. It had been windy this afternoon.
Hi, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. We didn't catch a lot, but we had a good time, as always. Let's take a look at our fishing game forecast brought to us by Mark Coward of Edgewater Beach Realty. Our time, we're looking at 3.08 to 5.08 this morning, good early time, and this evening, 3.30 to 5.30. Good times right there. Okay, now don't forget, Friday, August the 1st, uh, opening of Amberjack. AJ season be opening up. Remember, it got to be 30 inches. And also, gray triggerfish, it got to be 14 inches. So, that's opening up this Friday. Also, uh, got rumor now, uh, I, I can't come in and say it officially, but the, a lot of people have been asking about a boat ramp at, at Carl Gray Park. I get calls from people on a regular basis that uh, they see a tow truck pulling out a pulling out a truck and a, and a boat out of, out of a boat ramp. It's really got in bad shape, so be careful if you are launching a boat there. But uh, they are, they, they, the officials know about it. They are doing, they're getting some things done about it. Permits are, you know, they're in, in the process of being acquired. And the rumor is they're going to actually move the actual boat ramp closer toward the Hathaway Bridge. And it's a deeper water over there, and more excess. And, and uh, one of my viewers has suggested that, uh, that they go ahead and leave the original boat ramp for the kayakers and make an, another boat ramp right there across the Hathaway Bridge, which uh, that's a win-win situation. So we'll see how that develops. But uh, they are going to do something about that, so be, be aware of that. People ask me also, we saw that lionfish video the other day. Uh, they want to know what these lobster, fi lobster fishermen are getting per pound. I checked on it down in the Keys. The lobster fishermen for selling the lionfish are getting $6.50 a pound just for the whole fish, six fifty a pound. Now, granted, they don't weigh a, lo a lot, but you get a couple of two-pound uh, two fish, that's $13 right there. Do that three or four times. And, uh, you're in good shape. Plus, they can't put their traps in deep yet. If they can get permitted to go deeper, they, they'll start making really good money selling commercially line fish, okay? Well, listen, i got to wrap it up. Listen, I'm, I'm uh, going to have uh, Bill Allen going to be in for me tomorrow, so I hope you enjoy that show. And I'll be back uh, on Friday, so uh, be sure and uh, be watching. Sometime today, you'll be sure to do something good for someone else. You have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.